Imagine you have your new Bill Buddies controller and it's all wired up to your CNC machine and the motors are actually moving. You're pretty happy about that. But then you start to notice a few problems. The motors might be going way too fast or way too slow. They might be stalling or they might be going in the wrong direction. I'm Doug Coughlin and in this video I'm going to show you how to calibrate your CNC machine with the Bill Buttocks CNC controller. You really can't do anything if the motors are stalling, so we'll start there. The first thing to do is to tell the controller how much current to send to the motors. You can get the rated current from the motor label or the motor data sheet. Data sheets can often be found by entering the model number into your favorite search engine. If neither are available, try these guest values. Set NEMA 17 motors to 1 amp, NEMA 23 motors to 3 amps, and NEMA 34 motors to 5 amps. Go to the motor configuration page for your motor and set the drive current field to the value chosen in the previous step, and then click the green save button. Note, if your stepper motors are getting really hot during long running programs, you should probably reduce the drive current. Since the motor is not yet calibrated, the value in the max velocity field on the motor configuration page is not valid. This means the motor could run way too fast, causing it to stall or causing you to run into the end stops. You should reduce the max velocity to a value that allows you to comfortably control the game the axis with the game pad and to prevent motor stalls. Set the game pad to maximum velocity by pressing and releasing the yellow Y button. Then test your setting by running the axis back and forth with the game pad. If the motor stalls, reduce the max velocity until it no longer stalls. At this point, you need to decide what the right directions will actually be. There really are no wrong answers, but if you follow the recommendations in this video, you'll find that operation of your CNC machine with the Bill Butters controller is much more intuitive. That's especially true when you're using the gamepad. If you're standing in front of the machine facing the gantry, the spindle should move in the direction that would push the joysticks on the game pad. Travel along the x-axis will move the spindle back and forth across the gantry. Pushing the left joystick to the left should move the spindle to the left, and vice versa. Travel along the y-axis will move the entire gantry forward and backward. Push the left joystick away from you to move the gantry away, and vice versa. Travel along the z-axis will move the spindle up and down. Push the right joystick forward to move the spindle up, and vice versa. If any axis moves in the wrong direction, simply change the reverse checkbox on the configuration page for that motor port. Now I have all the motors moving in the correct direction, but the distances are still wrong. This means that things I cut will be the wrong size and or the wrong shape. We'll fix this by adjusting the travel per rev field on the motor configuration page. This field tells the controller how far the axis will move with one revolution of the motor. In many cases, we already know the value for this field. For instance, if the motor is directly coupled to the leader ball screw and we know the pitch of the screw, then we can simply enter that value into travel per rev field. In cases where we don't know the correct travel per rev value, we can figure it out using the following method. First, we note the current value in the travel per rev field. On this system, it's five meters per minute. Start by moving the axis to its minimum side, in this case, the left. This helps prevent crashes if the travel per rev field is way off. Then mark the current position of the moving part of the axis. Now 
Note that the units field on the control page is set to metric units. Since my tape measure only shows inches, I'll change this to imperial units by entering G20 on the MDI tab and then clicking the play button. Now I'll try to move 4 inches by entering G0 X4 in the MDI entry field and clicking the play button. Mark the new position. Move back to zero by entering G0X0 in the MDI entry field. Measure the distance between the two marks. Notice that even though I told it to move 4 inches, it actually moved 8 inches. The new travel per rev value equals the current travel per rev value times the actual distance traveled divided by the requested distance traveled. Now simply plug in the numbers. The current travel per revolution, T sub C, is 5 millimeters. The requested distance, D sub R, was 4 inches, and the actual distance traveled, D sub A, was 8 inches. So the new travel per revolution, T sub N, should be 5 millimeters times 8 inches divided by 4 inches equals 10 millimeters. Finally, go back to the motor configuration page, enter 10 millimeters in the travel per rev field, and save the change. Now, to confirm that the change worked, move the axis back to the zero position and request another 4 inch move by entering G0 X4 into the MDI entry box and clicking play. Mark the new position. Move the axis back to zero. Measure the distance between the new marks. Wow, things are a lot better now. Everything is going in the right direction and the distances are right on. Now you can make parts that actually come out the right size and shape. If you found this video helpful, please share it and give it a like. Watch for upcoming videos that will describe optimizing the speed of your CNC machine, configuring limit switches and setting up homing, setting up probing, integrating variable frequency drives, and configuring stall detect homing. If these topics are of interest, make sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Here are sources for more information. Thank you for watching. Thank you.